people joining us this morning. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Eleni Summershields. I am the Chief Operating Officer here at Wise Agent. I am joined today by Annette Anthony. Um, Annette is the Vice President of Technology at Engagement at Exit Realty Corp International. Welcome, Annette. Thanks Thank for being you so here. Much. Yes. Thanks for being here. Happy to be here. Yeah, and Annette's um, a dear friend, and um, we love um, love having you on. We're going to be having a great conversation today on um, what you can do to strengthen your um, relationships with your clients and potential clients. So we're going to be having a full hour conversation here on um, on having um, you know what what you should be doing, what you should be saying. So hey Nick, I see Nick is on with us too from Chicago. If you guys want to um, post in the chat what um, city and state and brokerage you're with, that'd be awesome. We always love I always love seeing where everyone is at. Um, as you all know, if you've watched me before, I love traveling. And so seeing where everyone at, is at around the, the world sometimes makes me excited to, um, to travel again. So, so if you guys want to post that, and then we are recording this session. We're also live on Facebook. So you'll be able to catch the replay on our um, Facebook channel there. We've got people coming in from Georgia and New York and um, all over the place in Utah. Awesome. Texas. These are, these are your successful people. Yes. yes. <laughs> Learning and earning rhymes for a reason, right? Yes. Yes. So um, that is fantastic where everyone is coming from. And so um, at the end of this broadcast, you will get the recording of this in your inbox. So in case your phone rings and you've got someone calling you, go ahead and feel free to, to take that call. We'll, um, you'll be able to catch the replay and the recording um, with us as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to post those in the Q&A section. In the bottom here, we do have Sarah, our lovely Sarah. Um, out from Wise Agent that's moderating those questions. And then um, you can also post any comments that you have in the chat section. We'll be going through those as well. Hey, Larry from Maryland. That's awesome that you guys are able to join us. So North Carolina, wow, we've got people from all over the country today. So that's spectacular. So we're gonna we're gonna jump in and um, and start this conversation. You guys had already submitted questions before we even got on this call today, which is awesome. And so we're gonna just jump in and just start talking a little bit, Annette. I mean, you have been a CRM expert since the early 2000s. And so you know a lot about technology and CRMs and relationship building. You've been doing this for quite some time, even though it doesn't show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you know, I know that, um, you know, when we're building relationships with people, it's something that, you know, it's such a, especially in the real estate world, I mean, you're dealing with high value dollars, we're talking big money, um, and having relationship building um, skill set is something that is really important and critical in this, in this business. What did she say? Absolutely. And you know, the biggest hang up, Eleni, is that people are still, you know, they're still asking the question, what CRM should I be using? But when I lean into that question and say, well, how many contacts do you have? And they have no idea. Yeah. You know, they just have a, an accumulation of names and addresses. You know, they're all mismatched into a big group, one big lump sum, right, of people. Right. And they're not they're not really leaning into what is possible with your, with the people that you're making relationships with. Now, I'll give you an example. Now, a friend of ours gave my husband this big three foot by four foot canvas painting. And the painting is of a football player. It's he's plays for the, the Green Bay Packers. His name is Jim Taylor. I didn't know who he was. He no longer plays for the Packers, but it's this huge canvas painting. And I thought, I'm sticking this hideous thing in the closet, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it in there. I don't want to see it. We don't have a place for it. And then a friend of ours looked at it and said, you know what, this is actually value value at about $5,000. Mm -hmm. 
So what do you, what do you think my behavior was immediately? Let's pull that sucker out. Let's wrap it up in, in some special, you know, fabric. Let's make sure that nothing, you know, we're going to not just shove it in the closet, but we're going to make sure to protect it. Now, why did my attitude about this painting change, Eleni? Why, why do you suppose? Well, I mean, yeah, if when you see, when you know that there's something of high value, you're going to take care of it. Right. So case in point, and I'm so glad we're having this conversation. Now, I'd love to share my screen because I've done a presentation before specifically about CRMs and relationship management. And I think it just begs the question to to go through this together. Now, first of all, I would love for all the attendees to just write this down. Right. If you engage intentionally with your CRM, which is a client relationship manager, if you just connect with people, 18 times in a 12 month year. Now, some people are saying, well, gosh, I only send out an annual calendar. So we already know there's opportunity to improve, right? <laughs> but there's more. So if you intentionally reach out 18 times throughout a calendar year, here's what you can expect, okay? You can expect to earn two referrals for every 12 people you know. Now that right there should absolutely say, it should tell you that you do not need thousands of thousands of people, you know, to, to, to blast or to put a drip email campaign, you need relationships. And yeah. if you connected 18 times throughout the calendar year, you're going to expect some referrals. Now, some of you might be thinking 18 times, let me give you some ideas. I wrote some thoughts down. If you did an annual calendar, I'm sorry, if you did a monthly calendar, that's 12 touches right there, taken right off the top. Um, if you did a birthday card, a purchase anniversary card, a thank you, uh, a, a, a referral card. Hey, I'd love a referral of friends and family that you know. Um, a Thanksgiving card, a holiday card, even just to note to let them know that you're growing professionally. That right there is over 20 touches, 20 ideas. But let's continue, okay? So you got to think about, so what's that worth to you? So if you had 100 contacts in your database, just 100 relationships, and you were, to, you know, if we did the calculation, eight people are going to give you two referrals each. So that's 16 referrals annually. Now let's do the math together, okay? Let's take a look at doing the math. First of all, you take 100 contacts, you divide it by 12, and you're going to get eight point like three, 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 three. Let's just say eight. So eight times two is going to give you 16 referrals. Now, what I want you to then think about is whatever your average commission in your market is, I want you to take that dollar amount and divide it by the number of referrals. Multiply it, yeah. Yeah, and sorry, multiply it by the number of referrals. And I'm telling you, that's going to be your estimated value of your database. But there's a couple numbers that, that we don't know. You need, you know, our attendees need to figure out. And that is how many contacts do they have? Right. And, and they have them in their phones. They have them in business cards. They have them all over the place. And uh, if you take that number and then you divide it by 12, you multiply it by two, that's going to give you the total number of referrals that you can expect. And then you need to figure out what is the average commission in your market. And that will give you your estimated value of your database. I'm going to go ahead and take the stop. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen, but I hope that's going to give everyone at least more thoughtful um, things to think about with yeah. respect to their database. And let's stop treating it like a, a date, uh, just a list of names and addresses. These are relationships that we need to make sure to hold tight. Exactly. And that's one of the questions that I know both you and I get all the time, get asked all the time is, you know, why do I need a CRM? What, you know, what am I putting in here? Um, and what, you know, what value is that? What does that bring to my business? And I think that's what you just shared so eloquently is, you know, just taking, and you don't have to get, I know there's some new agents out there probably, or even some veteran agents out there. It doesn't, you, you don't have to have the thousand contacts or tens of thousands of contacts. And if you do, fantastic, because then your number is going to be a little bit larger. But what that will mean is probably you need, you definitely need a system to support you and probably even a team to support you in that. But what it really tells you is that there is value in your database. There's value in knowing these contacts um, and having these um, build, you know, and I always use, I, I don't, I, Contacts are people that you know of, right? Clients are people that you work with, 
leads are the people that you're work that you're potentially going to be working with or hoping to be working with. So that's how I kind of um, define those three words. I see them as very different um, types of people, and um, that's how I kind of segment those people. And 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 we'll talk about segmenting audiences too um, a little later on. But I think that's the first step is just knowing and knowing who you're, what you're going to be looking for and what you're going to be saying. That messaging is so important because sometimes you don't necessarily want to say like, hey, you know, Bob, can you give me, can you refer somebody, you know, to me? What the way you want to say it, the messaging is more, you're inferring that. And so you want it to be a little bit more soft and gentle and not so aggressive like hey give me give me a referral somebody that wants to buy or sell right love your call if you call them for that right exactly <laughs> you know, Elena, you have to ask people for permission so yeah. for example i mean there's so many there's so many contacts out there who've been abandoned by their previous agent we know this oh yeah so the opportunity 86% of them have been yeah they don't have an agent to go to so asking your database meaning Ask people that you know, what I call your sphere, what many refer to as your sphere of influence. What does that mean? These are people who know, like, and trust you. That if you were to say, hey, when you run into someone who's thinking about buying or selling, or maybe getting into a career in real estate, I would love it if you would think of me, right? right. Exactly. Or if, you, if you ask them, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, do you have someone that you go to that you trust? And oftentimes they're going to say, you know what? I don't, I don't have that person I used to, or I don't remember who that person was. That's a tremendous opportunity for you to say, I want to be that person. Would you be okay with me just keeping in touch with you regularly to just share information of what's going on in the industry? Because you might run into someone that I can help. Can I count on you to yeah. share my contact information if you run into someone like that? And they will always say, absolutely. Yeah. And I think a, a great way of doing that um, through your CRM, and I'm going to share my screen here so everyone can kind of get an idea of some of the things that we're talking about, what you can be doing within your CRM to get that message out. One, a couple of things that Annette talked about is um, a monthly newsletter. So mm -hmm. Wise Agent already provides that for you. And what you can do is so easily just go in here and we're I don't even know what month we're in. We're in November, right? November. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, gosh, it's, it's been a long month. Um, and so you can go ahead and select your designations and you do want to select your designations because you've worked really hard for those things. Yeah. And those, those um, mean something to you and you should probably even send out an email explaining what all your designations mean so they understand. Um, we all know what the R, you know, in Realtor stands for and the code of ethics behind that, but maybe not every consumer understands that. And so that would be a great touch point as well. But your monthly newsletter can go out and it's fully branded with your information, with your, um, with your branding and everything, and just some, some, a good article to have. You have, you've done really nothing other than just go in here and just say, yeah, this looks great. I'm going to send this to, to my people, or maybe I want to edit something and you could totally edit. You don't like what this says. So you can take that out and do whatever you want. We even include like a nice thoughtful title for you. So when you're, um, so when you're sending this out as an email, this will be your subject line. Mm -hmm. And that is really a huge differentiation now because you've got, um, you have something to send out. So you have 12 out of the 18 touches that Annette is suggesting here. You already have those covered. So okay. you just need another six more throughout the year, yeah. right? So at one every other month um, to really go through and do and figure out. And that's really easy to do is those next six one, those next six touches could be a combination of a few things like texting is a great one. Mm -hmm. um, texting has a 99% open rate, a 57% response rate, which is huge. Mm -hmm. um, that's a huge response rate. Um, email still has, you know, pretty good responses as well, but, um, you know, texting is a lot more. I mean, if we all look at our phones right now, we probably don't have any 
well, I have a couple. Um, <laughs> we probably don't have any, maybe because we're on the, the webinar. That's why we have some in here uh, yeah. that are unread. But that's a really good response rate. And you want to be able to send a text message out to your, to your sphere. And so um, whenever I do demos, I always just click on this select all button. But really, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be more mindful of what you're doing. So you're going in and looking at your categories and saying, I'm going to send out, I think we have, maybe not spheres yeah so you want to select your sphere of influence and, and search those people and find them and then send them a text message um, and it could be a bulk text message that goes out but it has a nice thoughtful message behind it and it's also personalized with their um with their name so it'll say like hi annette um, and then if Nick gets it, hi, Nick, hi, you know, Bob, hi, whoever. And so um, you want to use those placeholders. Oh, good. And then type out your message to say, you know, thinking of you um, today, hope all is well, you know, have a blessed day. I don't know, you know whatever you want to say. Somebody asked, can you attach an image? And right there you can. So somebody okay. said, you know, can you include a QR code? which yeah, it looks like you can upload yeah. an image. Which is so great. you can choose an image from your wise agent account or a video. You can even include a bomb bomb video, or mm -hmm. you can upload something either from your phone or from your, from your desktop. So most definitely. And I, and those attachments, those are really nice because they come in as, you know, as a separate attachment that you can save, they can save, you can do all sorts of things. You could even include a link. So you can include a link to um, a YouTube video here if you want. And YouTube videos have the shortened URL sometimes, but you can also include a link to um, a landing page if you want. So if you want to promote maybe an open house or something that you're, you're hosting, maybe a client appreciation party that you're throwing. Um, so you can put in the bit.ly link, you know, and so um, and that would be whatever that is, but you can include those things in here for, um, for people to, to get that messaging across. And here's a question for you, Lainey, is the, um, the limit of how many text messages you can send to a group, what's your best practice using Wise Agent? So what, first and foremost, you should always follow, um, follow all, all laws and, and um, you know, making sure that you're um, having opt-ins and people know who you are. Really, there's no value if like Annette, you know somebody that I've never met or talked to and I, and I reach out to that person, I don't use your name, I just start like cold calling them really that doesn't bring any value to me. It doesn't make any sense. They're like, who are you? I don't know you. I don't, you know, how did you get my information? They'll just start questioning my morals and my ethics, right? So we, so we want to make sure that we're reaching out to people that kind of already know us. Um, and so that's the first thing. And the second thing is you can do up to 250 people with one click. So um, depending on how many people you have in each of your categories, you can, I've selected here 250 people um, now, granted, this is a test account. They don't all have phone numbers, but um, I've selected up to 250 people to send that out to, um, and then they can respond to me. And all the responses will come to my mobile device, right? They'll come to my phone, but they'll also come into, um, into Wise Agent, right? So if I go to our handy contact here, Michael Phelps, who I've texted before, I could see all my text messages back and forth from him. And so if I have a team, right, and, um, you know, all the, the responses are going to my phone, but I have other people taking care of some things for me, they can see the text messages through the responses here. Um, and so they'll be able to, to see all of that here. Um, so you can see when he responds, it has a little arrow next to it. That's his response. Um, and and that's that's what you're looking for. And that's what your key, team can look for. And it's also in our reports that you will be able to find all of that as well. And also segmenting your database is really important so that whatever that message is, you don't want to just blast it out to everybody because it might not apply. So maybe yeah. ch chat a little bit about your best practices for segment, segmenting so your database and how that's done. Yeah, so I mean, I think everyone is kind of different. And I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on it. But I mean, definitely segmenting them as far as buyers and sellers, that's like the most obvious. But I would even say to get a little bit further and even say, like, if, are they investors? Are they tenants or landlords? Do they have, you know, are they home flippers? Do they flip homes? Um, so 
I, I would say that. I think some of the things that I prefer to not see is to not say like they're a home buyer in Chicago, right? Like, well, if you want to know what city they're looking to buy in, that's like a separate field that they that you should be looking at. Um, and that's something that you can do like, you know, where is their, their property area? So what are they looking or the property cities? So if I come in here and say, um, you know, Chicago, I want to see everyone that's looking to move to Chicago, of course, I, people have changed it on me. So there's no one in Chicago here, but let me see Fountain Hills. Mm -hmm. And I always pick on Chicago because that's my hometown. And Fountain Hills is my new home. So um, maybe Fountain Hills, there we go. They're all in Fountain Hills now, they've all moved. And so even Bon Jovi's moved to Fountain Hills. So I know that um, this is where um, they're looking to move from. So I wouldn't really say that he's a buyer in Fountain Hills. I would say he's a buyer. And then in the search criteria area, um, this is where I would put what kind of, you know, what location where he's looking to move to and put those details in there. So really you can pinpoint a lot of different, you can do a lot of different searches within Wise Agent, not just the categories and the tagging of it. But I'd like to hear some of, of your ideas too, Annette. You know what? I always suggest the agents just keep it simple because there are a lot of people who are super literal and they will be like, they'll add so much time and getting their database ready that they're never, ever sending anything. You know, they're just waiting to get ready and they're just, until it's perfect, I'm going to send it out. You know what? Just keep it simple. You know, yeah. you've got people who've invested in you by paying you a commission, whether they were a buyer or a seller, it's called a client right? So you could have a client. Um, I do believe too, if you have, if you have renters, they could be in a separate category. If you have investors, a separate category, your friends and family and people who know, like, and trust you, that's going to always be your largest group. That's your sphere of influence. And with respect to databases is having as much information about that individual is so important first names, last names, email addresses, phone numbers, their birthdays, um, their, their wedding anniversary, who the name of their spouse is, do they have kids, do they have um, pets, all of that is super important to make sure that you put in. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, and that's why we've built out Wise Agent the way we've done. So on this contact summary page. So if you guys are on and not all too familiar with um, Wise Agent and how the database here works, is that we have a field for pretty much everything. And then if we don't have a field for something, well, we've given you the ability to have custom fields, right? That's awesome. So um, so there's there's a field for everything, your family, you know, um, you mentioned their children, their pets, their relatives, you can attach all sorts of things in here. Um, so you, you really get to know the person. And I always say, whenever you're gonna be calling somebody, you're reaching out to them, right? So let's say I go back to Michael Phelps and I'm gonna be calling him um, for, you know, just to check in with him. I'm gonna to go to his contact summary page and see, look at my, my past notes. What have we talked about? Um, what was our last conversation about? Mm -hmm. Cause that's gonna help me kind of like pick up from where I left off. Okay, last time I reached out to him was just a couple of weeks ago. It was his birthday. So, mm -hmm. all right, maybe I'm gonna see, maybe I was invited to his birthday party or whatever it is. Talk to him about that. I know what his interests are. I know who his wife is. Um, I know, you know, his family, his, his kids and his pets. So I'm going to reach out and I'm going to be very specific about, you know, the, the information that I have because I'm building that relationship. And so if I already know this person and I don't know Michael Phelps in real life, <laughs> but, <laughs> but if I did, um, you know, I would, I would be talking to him and connecting with him on that level of like, oh, it looks like, you know, you guys are getting ready to celebrate a birthday for Beckett in a few, you know, in a couple of months. What are you guys doing? The holidays are around the corner. Um, you know that they have young children here. So maybe when you're going out to show a home, you bring a coloring book so the kid can be kind of active and stay out of the way and not, you know, be so fussy. So be intentional and just look through and listen to what um, to what your people are saying and what information they're giving you and jot it all down. Put it all in in your in your database. Everything should go in here. 
I think, Eleni, the difference between agents who really lean into their clients and those who don't, like this is an example of what you're sharing of, of an agent who really is understanding of who that consumer is, who that client is, and versus an individual who just has a database in a, in a CRM system where it just has some information, but really no notes. There's yeah. no history of things that you've been sending regularly. This is what your database could look like. And, you know, it's going to be hard for those individuals when you have that close of a relationship, they will always run into other agents, but yeah. because you know so much about them as their realtor, they're not going to use somebody else. Chances are, it's going to be pretty difficult for them not to. Right. Because they're going to be thinking like, oh, I'm listening to the news. I'm looking at my neighborhood and I'm seeing all these houses. And wow, I can't believe that house sold for that amount. My house is better. You know, when, when they start thinking like that, they, your name should be the first name that they come up with to say like, let me call my realtor and see, let me see how they will advise me for, you know, how to proceed from here, like, and share my information. And so you're doing something so personal and having so much that you're, you're helping them with this, this huge financial, um, you know, decision that you're helping them through really should have a lot of that trust and knowledge to help them through. And, and you've been proving that all this time with the relationship you've been building. True. And for many who are probably watching or are going to watch later, let's go back to the basics. Like, let's say you've got an agent who's watching and they don't have this. How do we get them to this point? Like where, where in wise agent, what's the first place that they should start? Well, so I, that's a great question. So first, I mean, they can always go to wiseagent.com to set up um, their 14 day free trial. One of the things that we do here, because, you know, our job here, my job here is, is technology and to know technology and, um, and everyone, my staff needs to know the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not necessarily the role of the realtor. You guys don't need to know all the ins and outs of every intricacy that we need to know. Let us be that specialty for you. So what we do for you, you know, um, just on a different level of things, um, you should be doing that for your clients, right? And so what we do is we walk everyone through this getting started session because it's so important to get in there and get all your contacts in there. You, you can't really do anything unless you have contacts in your database. Mm -hmm. So you can't market to anyone. You can't um, send a text message out to anyone unless you have contacts in there. Um, and if you have, you know, if you're struggling to figure out where your all your you know your clients are coming from maybe you have a post-it notes a notebook or whatever you have or they're in your um your gmail account or whatever get those all in because like your gmail your outlook those are address books they're not really a, they're not a crm it's not going to help you segment things it's not going to help you really draw out that full picture like a CRM will. And so that's the biggest first step is getting your, your contacts in everything. So then you can start organizing all of your data. The other thing, you know, you, you mentioned earlier, you know, um, knowing your clients, one of the, one of the things that we talked about um, earlier today, when we were preparing for this webinar is one of my biggest pet peeves out there is when um, I'm in some of these Facebook groups for real estate agents and real estate professionals. And they're talking about how they just closed on a listing with, you know, client on a $500,000 house. And they want to know what's, what's the closing gift? What do they give them as a closing gift? And it's like, you know, you really shouldn't be crowdsourcing that. That's something, you know, when you draw the picture and that's what your CRM will be helping you do is draw the picture of who they are. So they have three kids and two dogs and they're married um, maybe they bought a house with a, you know, something like a gazebo or something or a beautiful garden. So be thoughtful and intentional because they're going to be dropping these hints, right? Mm -hmm. um, of what, of what it is that they like and what it is that they do and how they live their life. So then you should like play off of that and then take those cues, those social cues and, and give them a thoughtful gift. Mm -hmm. it, it, it should just be thoughtful. I think that's, Absolutely. that's more valuable than a dollar amount, right? Absolutely. So, you know, 
first of all, getting your contacts in, importing them mm -hmm. from wherever you have, you know, from wherever you're storing them, putting them into Wise Agent. One of the things that I do, and you alluded to this with the social, is um, you can start leaning into your people by find, by by watching what they're doing on social. You know, so you're going to have a list of your people. See if you're even connected on social with these individuals. Okay. And if you're not, you know, if you're not connected, get connected. Once you get connected, you can lean into what they're really interested in. If they love gardening, um, right here at my desk, I always have seed packets, right? Yes. So that I can send them something that I know, or if it's a wind chime, or if it's something small, the only way that I know that is because I've been paying attention to the clues that they're dropping. Now I have a strategy, it's called 10 by 10 a.m. Okay, so the strategy here is you go on social media and my strategy is I need to connect with 10 people by 10 a.m. So that usually takes me about 30 minutes, sometimes 45. And the intention is on social, I wanna connect meaningfully. So I look for people that I, I need to connect with. I look for opportunities to send an instant message to through social. Um, if they posted about something, I want to comment, not just like or lurk, you know, see what people are, are posting about. And I also want to make sure that, you know, if someone posts about something that's pretty impactful for them, that I pick up my phone and I give them a call. Like one of our agents received an award. So I, I could have commented. I did love the post, but I picked up the phone and I called and I said, that award is beautiful. That is something that people, you know, when they post, it's their hope that people pay attention, that they like it, that they comment, right? But man, you're going to catch people really surprised by, you know, when you, when you do that phone call or you do that instant message with an audio voice message, you know, letting people know, hey, I saw your post, I hope you're okay, or I saw your post, congratulations, or I saw your post, how did you, you know, how do you feel once you've accomplished this amazing goal? Um, people really love that you could take all that information, put it into your CRM, clearly like here. And of course, you can add reminders and and continue to build on the notes. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's a great like takeaway for people to do. I feel like we've had a couple of great takeaways, but the the 10 by 10 is great because it doesn't, it's just 10 people a day. And if you, you know, I always say like, you know, crawl before you, you walk and walk before you run. So if, you, if, you, if that's overwhelming for some people, you know, being on social media can be a little intimidating. I know, um, I'm, I know I'm working on it um, myself <laughs> personally. So, you know, but do it, if, even if it's just once a week, just do take 10 people that one, you know, one week and just try and focus on it, um, you know, a little at a time and build yourself up to it where you're getting to it where it's every day or five days a week, um, reaching out and connecting to people and being thoughtful and intentional is really the whole theme of everything that we're saying here is um, having the right intentions and being thoughtful in what you're saying. I mean, everyone wants to hear that, you know, thank you or that congratulations. And, um, and then, because then they can start replying back to you and you can start a dialogue that way it's a great conversation starter um if you have a jumping off point especially like hey i just saw you and you know what it's so funny you you've been on my mind annette and i just saw your post congratulations on that award you know right. tell me what else has been going on with you what yeah. are you going to be doing are you doing anything special to celebrate this weekend start yeah. a conversation like that it's just really simple to to get that going and you know, Lainey, once you continue, like when you do have a couple back and forth conversations, it's going to make it a lot easier to say, hey, I've never asked you, but I, I'd love to know if you had questions about buying or selling real estate, do you have someone that you go to that you trust? Yeah. And more often than not, they're going to say, you know what? I don't. And you can say, great. I would love to be that person. And then be intentional, make sure you do that monthly newsletter, send that thank you note, you know, do that text message that lets people know how much you appreciate their time, you know, connect with them on social, and then you can build from there. So even if someone is, you know, who's watching, they don't have that, that solid CRM. And, and I mean, they have the system, like, for instance, wise agent, they put their contacts in, you can really start um, reinforcing the foundation of the relationship building just by the little things. 
Yeah. It's building think, upon that. And one of um, one of the things I think that you can totally be doing, let me get my glasses back on so I can see these tiny little letters here. Um, but one of the things that I love, you know, where, cause you know, it, it doesn't always have to be about real estate, but sometimes it, it can be, and it should. And if it's done in the right way, it's done in a way where like, wow, they're going to be so impressed by you. One of the things, one of our partners is, um, cloud CMA. And so if you are a subscriber of cloud CMA, um, you can send out, um, a market analysis to somebody that's personalized to their home, even though they've not, you know, um, they're not maybe currently thinking about selling, they're not currently thinking about buying or anything else, but you can set it up on a subscription. So like every six months, and we were talking about that, those 18 touches. Mm -hmm. So we had 12 touches with the newsletter mm -hmm. and then you can do a CMA there once a year, you can do it twice a year. So, and you can just say, hey, I'm just gonna be sending you, you know, when you make that phone call saying, do you have somebody that you um, trust and, you know, for your, your real estate needs, if not, I can be that person for you. And what I could do is I could just set you up with an automated CMA or a CMA that comes out to you once a year, twice a year. So you can see what the value of your home is and see what's happening with your house. They're going to always, like 100% of the time, read this message because it is about their home value. And that is one of the biggest things that they own, the most expensive things that they own. So they're going to want to know what that is. So again, providing value that you're bringing to them, it's going to be something that they're going to read. So you want to send, again, the, the intention is providing value. And, um, and that's something that's really important and can be easily done um, where I can set that up every year and I don't have to personally do that and continue to do that. So you can leverage that technology to help you. That's what I love. You know, and, and just being serious about what it is that you do. You're a real estate sales professional. You know, secret agents are only good in the movies, right? You want to be intentional and in letting people know, hey, I'm taking my business seriously. And I want to build like my group of my very important connections. These are my very important relationships. And I'm choosing you to be in this very special you know, group of people, there isn't anybody that's going to say, eh, I'm good, right? Yeah. They want to feel special. They want to feel included. And when you're providing them information that is just educational and you're demonstrating your professionalism, you're going to win for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So some of the questions that we've gotten, I think um, are, are really have, have been answered through here, but um, one of them is, you know, how do, how do we really connect with old clients, clients that maybe bought a, years ago? What do we do? And so I think that's a great question because, you know, if you had, you know, you went through a transaction with them and now it's been ages since you've talked to them, like, how do you rekindle that? It's, it's kind of intimidating, I think. Um, I think a lot of people would feel the same way is, um, and I know Wise Agent has a couple of solutions, but Annette, I'd like to hear what your yeah. thoughts are on that. You know what? First of all, it's like ripping a Band-Aid off and just apologize, yeah. right? And let people know, hey, I'm sorry. I should have done a better job of staying connected with you, but you really do mean a lot to me. And I do, you know, want to, I'm, I'm putting in place some structure, which Wise Agent, seriously, yeah. I'm putting in some structure in my business so that I can be more intentional about staying in touch. Yeah. If you went to somebody and told them that, they would be like, hey, it's okay. Life gets busy. I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. I'm glad to hear that you're still in real estate. Just apologize. But here's the thing. The longer you wait, the worse it gets, right? So yeah. people are so forgiving. And you know, with the years that we've had, over 18 months, almost two years of this global pandemic, People understand, but more yeah. importantly, they want to be connected. So I think it's really important for you to just say, hey, I've put some great structure in my business to, 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 to be more accountable, to staying in touch with people I care about. Those right. are some little subtle things to say to let people know, hey, I'm, I'm more committed and you can count on me. And then yeah. it's time to put that into action. Exactly. Yeah. That action is always the one thing I think people will always, I always, I always tell people, you know what, 
it, they'll surprise you. Your past clients um, will surprise you. You know, they'll be gracious, more gracious than you think and more gracious than what sometimes you are to yourself. Um, sometimes we're a lot harder on ourselves than, than we really need to be. But um, one of the, a couple of things that Wise Agent can do is help with that um, and putting them on a drip campaign. So you can write out that message and that could be your very first message saying, you know what, I'm just gonna, you know, doing, going back to, to past clients and maybe I haven't talked to them in forever and I'm just gonna come out here and just do this six touch and I'll make this, this first touch and I'll personalize this message and I'll just really be apologetic about, you know, like, hey, I haven't been there for you in a while. Sorry about that, but I'm here now. Mm -hmm. I've gotten some organization. I've got a team around me or structure around me. And then send this out and you can send out this drip campaign where it would, you know, send out an email automatically um, in, you know, in sequential order. So you can set it up to go out you know, every seven days or every, you know, every month or every other month, however you see fit. So I can say like every 30 days, I want this to go out. And then, um, and then the next event, it will go out, you know, if I want that one to go every seven days or, you know, whatever I want that to be, I can keep setting this up and change the preferred time, maybe not 6am, that might be a little early, but, um, you know, and you know, your people. So, Maybe you want to have a 6 a.m. one. Maybe you know a lot of people that are, you know, early risers. So get get that out to them then. But be intentional with that and sending out a, a drip campaign and setting people up on a drip campaign so they know that you're um, you're still in business and that you're still there and available to them is something that I think is really important. You know what, Eleni, many agents that I've spoken to in the years have said, okay, I ripped the Band-Aid off. I went back to my database. I apologize. And I'm stepping forward, right, with the new structure. And they will, you know, every single agent that I've spoken to, they've come back to me and said, you're not going to believe it. There was some clients that I spoke to that said, I am so glad that you reached out. I have a friend of mine who's thinking about moving or I have a, an adult son or daughter who's ready to purchase their new home. I'm so glad that you reached out. I'm glad to hear that you're still in real estate and that you're doing well. And I've got someone that I've got to send to you. And I'm sure people, you know, you're going to experience that, but you won't experience it until you take the first step. Right. Right. And that will help even with segmenting your audience. I mean, you might get some bounces, you might get some of that um, unsubscribes or whatever, you might get a small, a small amount of that. Um, first and foremost, Wise Agent helps with, you know, taking care of those things will we'll remove anyone that's um, and not necessarily remove them. We never delete anything out of your account. And I never recommend for you to delete anyone from your account, but we'll remove and we'll append the word remove at the end of their email. So you don't, you know, send any messages to somebody that's bouncing, but it really does help with your messaging because now you've segmented people and you're like, okay, well, these people are still active and they're reading, you know, cause you can go in and look at your reports and you can see, oh, they're reading my emails. Yeah. So consistently I'm sending them a monthly newsletter um, where's my emails, total monthly emails. So they're, they're consistently reading my emails and I can come in here and search by the number of opens. Um, and this is a test account. So we don't send, I have to fudge this and go back a while. Um, but what happens is you can sort it to see okay. who's opening it the most. So if you've sent out, you know, 200 or 2000 emails, that's really hard to go and, and call those 200 people following up on that email message. But if you sort it through the number of opens, well, the people that are opening it multiple times, those are the ones that you're going to want to call first mm -hmm. and reach out to them because they're finding value in what you're saying. And so doing that will really help you kind of narrow down who you should be concentrating on. Yeah. Um, one of the questions I see Heather is asking a question, is there a place where um, within Wise Agent that when you make a note that it will be time stamped? And absolutely there is Heather. So anytime here, so you can see I opened up a note here for Bon Jovi. And so whatever I write in here, um, happy birthday, I don't know, whatever I'm gonna say to him, it's already time stamped. It's 1140 here in, um, in Arizona, but it time stamps it for me. When I save this note, it will it will have the time stamp on here. Um, 
like everything else. So we do timestamp that for you automatically with your time zone, not ours here. So, um, so in case anyone was wondering about that. Um, the other thing, I know there is um, a, a couple of things. Did you, oh, did you wanna add anything else on that, um, Annette, on the reaching out to past clients? You know what, it's just, again, just take that Band-Aid off, reach out to them. They always know someone who's thinking about buying or selling. Yeah. And your call could be the call that, that that they get. And they're so excited to, to hear from you. And they're going to give you a referral right away. That right there. And don't stop. Don't say, okay, now I've got this client I've got to work with. I want you to go back. And I believe that one of the best things that you can do is just make sure that daily on the days that you work, that you block off the time in your day that you can go into your database and who are you, who are you going to connect with? How much information do you have about them? Um, add some notes, add some reminders, go look and see what they've posted on social media, wherever they're connected. There could be some valuable nuggets that you can include, but if it's not scheduled in your calendar, it just won't get done, Eleni. So you don't want to fall back into those old behaviors. It's a new day. This is a new way. This, you know, having a great system like Wise Agent, you want to make sure that you stay, take those steps forward and make those um, schedule yourself the time to go in your database daily. Yeah, I'm big on that. I'm big on time blocking. I have, you know, things that I do um, every day. And I always recommend too, and I don't know, Annette, about you, how often you do this, but I do this in, with my own contacts, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I do use a CRM on a daily basis. And so it is really important to make sure that the data is you know, up to date. Every time I talk to somebody, I go in there just like what I was showing with the notes. Every conversation gets logged. It just, it has to get logged. There's no way. There's sometimes where I'm talking to 50, 60, 100 people per day. I can't remember every conversation I'm having. And there's some things in there that I I need to remember. There's some things in there that I want to remember, like, oh, Annette, you know, ha, ha, you know, Annette's husband loves, um, what was that team? The Green Bay Packers. I'm from yeah. Chicago, so we don't like the Packers. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so it's like, okay, so we've got a little rivalry there, you know, right. so make a note of that. Those little things, even those little things that you want to remember, um, mm -hmm. because it really can be impactful and, um, and help, and help steer the, the conversation sometimes when you're like, gosh, I don't know why I'm going to be calling in that. I, I know I need to say something. I just don't know what to say. Oh, well, the Packers were playing last night. And so maybe I want to talk about that. Just right. to strike up some cover or they're playing Absolutely. this weekend, seeing, hey, do you want to get together for a, a Sunday night football game? Mm -hmm. So it really can be that, that useful in your notes to be putting content in here that will help you remind you of what the conversations were, but also help remind you of like, what to say next, um, you know? So we have this add follow-up um, anytime you add a note. So you add a note in here and you can complete this call, but you can also add a follow-up. So it does actually alert you of reaching back out to them. Maybe you guys are talking about listing their home or buying a new home. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna be, you know, on top of things and not forget and not let things slip through the cracks. That's what a CRM will do for you. I love the reminder part because there's always something next to do. There's always something next to reinforce. There's always something next to follow up on um, or touch base about or rekindle that conversation. Um, and each of those steps will add more value to that individual. I mean, your client relationship manager is so important, but don't forget the value of your database is so important. And every time you have a touch, you're adding equity, right? To that relationship, which is very important. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it really is. And that follow-up is something, and you know, um, we have to put this caveat that it's not required. I'm always, I, I told my developers, and we're like, can we say that it is recommended though? <laughs> like we just, yes. I really, I really would love to see everyone using this feature because it is so important to help you, um, to really help you get going on that next conversation, that next touch. Um, it, you know, out of the, you know, and that's, and that's suggesting and proposing the 18 touches throughout the year, I would say at least a handful of those should be 
either a phone call or a text message that's like a one-off text message that's something really personal or even a face-to-face conversation like hey let's meet up for coffee or let's um let's grab dinner let's you know do something let's take a walk around the park together um and it doesn't have to revolve around the conversation at least doesn't have to revolve around real estate um because that's what we all love to talk about right but um consumers sometimes they have other interests and so find out what their interests are and and then talk to that you know oh and that you love gardening me too and so you're walking around and you're and you're taking your weekly walk or whatever it is with this person you don't always have to be in selling mode mm-hmm. of you know um or walking advertisement of yourself but you're being an empathetic, compassionate person that they start to like, and they start to really get to know. And the next thing that they'll do after that is they will do business with you because of those things that they really um, connect with you on that level. So it really does take, it does take a little bit of time and effort, but everything that's worth it does, right? Absolutely. And you know, when you ask them for permission, when you ask them if they have someone they go to, if they had questions about real estate, or know someone who does, do they have somebody that they go to in real estate? Do they have another realtor that they go to consistently who they trust? They're going to most likely tell you they don't. So just by them admitting that they don't have someone opens the opportunity for you to say, I want to be that person. Can I stay connected with you? I'm not going to, you know, bombard you. You don't have to tell them I'm going to send you 18 things throughout the year. (laughs) You know what? They're just going to get something about probably once every four and a half weeks, you know, they're going to get something from you. And people love to know, people love to feel like they matter. You know, it's something that our company believes in when, when you make people feel as though they're special, they're important, that you value the relationship, you're going to win, but your behavior in what you're doing to really reinforce that be, you know, that relationship will speak volumes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, you can send every email out there, but if you're not following up with it on some personal connection, even if it is just once or twice a year, twice a year, you're calling and saying, Hey, you know what? Happy birthday. Thought Mm -hmm. of you, um, you know, or, or forwarding an email. I, I think that this is one, one of my personal things that I love, um, I love receiving. And I, I always tell, encourage people to do as well is if, um, you know, so we'll take the example of gardening, right? So Annette and I both like to garden. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, maybe someone out there is like, I know people that like to garden too, but I don't have any value to add to that. Like, I don't know what to, to show people, you know, what to talk about. I can't relate to that. Um, which I like to garden and I really have no value to bring to gardening. I really, <laughs> I really don't. Um, but what we've done within wise agent is you can go from our email tab, you can click on this RSS feed. And what will happen is you could subscribe to blogs that, um, of interest for your, um, the people that are in your database for your contacts. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and I believe I have one in here about gardening. Um, so this is um, home style. I don't know. It looks like some kind of vegetable yeah. garden, which is fantastic. So I can just sit here and say, you know, send this over to Net and everybody that I know in my, um, in my database that's into gardening. And I can say, I read this article and thought of you. I love it. And, um, and now it's, and then you send them, a, I didn't write this article. Um, check it out. And now I can't type and talk at the same time. And so now I can sit here and I can delete some of this stuff out of here. And now I can say, you know, for this over to send this over to everyone in my database that likes to garden and it'll go out branded with my company and for, you know, my company branding here, this is the article, a nice image that they'll get. And then my branding here. And then here's the, here's the best part about it is Annette, if you get this and you have 10 people that you know that are into gardening, then you're going to for like, wow, this is a great article. I'm going to send this to all my gardening friends. And now you're forwarding that message that has all of my branding on it. Mm-hmm. And now you've opened up my sphere. So maybe somebody reads it and like, oh, this person likes to garden and it's real. And, you know, Rachel's a realtor. I'm going to reach out to her because, you know, 
I, if I'm gonna sell my house that has this gorgeous garden, I want somebody that understands that and then can find me somebody that appreciates that as well. And so okay. there's, you know, there's a lot that goes into it that's kind of really subtle, but really helpful and personalized too. You know, it's no wonder why you guys are consistently in the top 10 of CRMs to, to, to utilize that you have articles like that already. I mean, as it is today, most agents have to go out, crowdsource what they're looking for, take that hyperlink and then squeeze it into their, you know, go into their CRM systems. And that doesn't always work. So that's pretty smart. How do you guys consistently, I mean, to be in the top 10, you guys must have some, what drives you to continuously add all these elements into wise agent? Well, so one of the, I mean, I, you know, Annette, I, I travel quite a bit. And so the reason I travel so much, and typically someone in my position doesn't really travel that much, but I do because I love to go out and listen to what agents have problems with. Like, what is your pain point? Where's the rub? What's happening? Um, and let me see if I can, you know, figure out a solution using technology to solve that. And then I come back and, um, and then my dev team goes to work and they start doing things that will, <laughs> they actually do all the hard work, right? And they write all of the code and do everything in there to solve those problems. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a problem solver. Um, and so, um, so that, that's what we do is, and not just myself, but I have a team of people that do the same thing. And Brandon, our CEO does the same thing as well. And we, we talk to agents and brokers to hear what's happening. And we have um, a good, you know, we, we have our, our ear to what's happening in the industry to, to know that. So like later on this week, I'll be seeing you again in person yeah. with our third time in just a couple of weeks that I'm going to see you. We'll be in um, San Diego for National Association of Realtors um, Conference and Expo. And so, you know, it's, it's going to those events. Um, I talked about that a couple of weeks ago with um, my dear friend, Marcy James, um, when that you and I have done webinars with Marcy, um, you know, talking about influence, you know, being an, an industry influencer, attending events like um, NAR's expo and conference, it's a great way of really finding out what are people doing, what are, what's happening in the industry, who are the movers and the shakers, because even if you're in one market, you know, I'm here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, and that you're in Iowa. I, you know, I can exchange information with you because we're in different markets. So we're really not competitors. So right. I can see like, well, what are you doing that's working for you? And that's what these conferences do is they, they build that community too, which is really important. I think it's great. You've got a ton of integrations in your platform. Yeah. And with the CRM system, it's not just client base, you know, it's your sphere of influence, but also what you just said, other realtors, you can create your own sphere of professional realtors where you can exchange, you can mind share, you can strategize, great opportunity there. Yeah, yeah, and I'm excited. You guys are having um, a booth at your at NAR. I know that as as we are as well. So if yes. anyone is going to be in the San Diego area and attending um, National Association of Realtors, stop by and say hi to um, to myself and Annette. And at some point, we'll we'll get together to Annette as well. But um, I'm excited for that. Um, I know we I have our booth. If anyone's going to be there, and maybe Sarah can post this in the chat as well. So our booth is 2324 in San Diego and um, Annette will be at the exit booth at 1821. Yes, come by and say hi. Yeah, we'd love that. Um, and so um, next week, thank you so much though Annette for, for being on here with me today. I really appreciate it. And um, thank you everyone for tuning in as well. And um, I believe next week is the eight, the 18th. I think that's next week. Yes, the 18th. I think it's a Thursday at 10 a.m. Um, I'm going to be back on the webinar series with Spencer Harmon, who is the president of Wave Communications, talk about integrations. So um, Wave Communications powers our power dialer um, within the CRM. We're going to be talking about, um, you know, how to use the power dialer and the power of picking up the phone and calling people. So we're continuing on this theme of, of relationship building and doing that using the phone. And and um, leveraging that. And then also on Friday, I'm going to have another webinar with one of my, my good friends, um, Jeremiah's Jamie on Monero. So 
um, J-Man is going to be at the Wise Agent booth in San Diego. And we're going to be doing um, Instagram reels. So if you guys follow Wise Agent on Instagram, you'll see we're doing this owl dance. I even did the dance. Um, <laughs> Jay, <laughs> he, um, I was going to say threatened. He didn't threaten me, but he challenged me. I'm like, did he threaten me? Highly encouraged. <laughs> he encouraged and challenged me to do this owl dance. And so um, we're going to be doing this owl dance. We're just going to have some fun at um, the expo hall. So um, that'll be fun. But even if you're not attending the expo, you can still do the owl challenge. We're giving away some cool prizes, like a ring light and some other things and gift cards. So it'll be really fun. Um, so stop by the booth or, or go to our Instagram page. And so then the following Friday, the 19th, we'll be talking about Instagram reels and um, getting real with that and how um, kind of our results on that and what realtors can be doing to, to get more engagement on social. So that'll be a fun one. So good. Yeah. This is such a great conversation because, you know, technology will never replace the agent. It won't. It yeah. reinforces who they are, but agents who resist in adapting and learning new tools and getting structure, those are the ones that are going to be pushed out of the industry. And I really would love to see all the attendees who are watching this video, you know, this, this um, presentation or after, don't be that agent who gets pushed out because you're not willing to adapt. I mean, I know personally because of Wise Agent. You have such an incredible team who really want to see all the users be successful with Wise Agent, and you're not doing this alone. And, and if you're still, oh, I, I just got to catch up, um, you can start today. Today is a great day to yeah. start getting re, you know, reignited with your database. Make a difference for sure. Exactly, exactly. So um, and if you are one of those people where you're like, gosh, I need to start using a CRM feel free to reach out to us, go to wiseagent.com and sign up there. Um, reach out to our support staff. I know Sarah went through a lot of um, questions here. Um, if there's any follow-ups, you can just send us an email at help at wiseagent.com and um, ask us any questions there. You can um, reach me through that as well. And um, yeah, we'll, we're happy to connect with you guys and help solve any problems that you're, ha you know, that you're having, so. Thank you so much for what you guys do, Eleni. It's oh, life-changing to help agents reclaim their database and yes. put yeah. them on the map and get them to accomplish their goals. It can't be done by accident. And you guys are doing an amazing, amazing job. Thank you for all that you're doing. Oh, thanks, Annette. Thanks for saying that. Thank you for being here today and sharing all of your wisdom with us. And um, I appreciate that and appreciate everyone that watched today. So I'll see you guys next week, if not in San Diego. All right. Let's start connecting. Take yeah. care, everyone. Bye.